Conservation. The act of protecting species from extinction and attempting to retain the natural diversity of life seen on Earth. Evolution. The process by which species gradually change and adapt to their surroundings over many generations. These familiar concepts in biology are strongly intertwined. In fact, understanding how evolution works turns out to be essential when figuring out how best to save our species. The total human population is on track to surpass 9 billion by the year 2050. As we expand, we wipe out huge areas of naturally occurring habitat, mainly to make way for agriculture. Along with pollution, poaching, the illegal pet trade and climate change, humans could be responsible for a mass extinction on par with the one that wiped out most of the dinosaurs. Around 5.8 million hectares of forest, that's an area almost three times the size of Wales, is cleared every year. Critically endangered mammals like orangutans or rhinoceros often make the news, yet 42% of amphibians are threatened. More than 40% of the world's coral reefs have been lost in the last 40 years, and despite being some of the least well studied, at least a third of our insect species are also in decline. That's a bit of a problem when three quarters of the foods we grow are pollinated by insects with species like bees producing around 153 billion euros worth of crops each year. Not to mention that pretty much all wild ecosystems depend on plant life. Roughly 1 in 10 European bee species is threatened with extinction. Within the UK alone, two species of bumblebee are known to have recently gone extinct. Not exactly surprising, as we've lost about 97% of our wildflower-rich meadows since the 1930s. Conservationists are now striving to bring back our bees. In 2009, a project began to reintroduce the short-haired bumblebee, or Bombus subterraneus, back into the UK. It was declared locally extinct in the year 2000, but small populations still exist in parts of Europe and in New Zealand. The New Zealand population were introduced by British settlers in the late 1800s to help pollinate plants being grown to feed livestock. As descendants of British bees, they seemed the ideal candidates to help restore a British population and work began to breed them in captivity, ready for transportation back to their motherland. But despite their heritage, an analysis of their DNA revealed they might not be so perfect. Today's New Zealand bumblebees are thought to be descended from as few as two queen bees who survived the long voyage from the UK. To think about why that might be a problem, we need to consider how evolution by means of natural selection works. Back in 1859, Charles Darwin recognised that in order to evolve and adapt to their environment, populations needed to have variation. For example, some individuals might have traits that make them more resistant to a disease, avoiding predators or finding food, while others may lack those traits. When times get tough, individuals with those traits are more likely to survive and produce offspring than those without. When the traits are genetically determined, i.e. encoded in their DNA, they can be passed on to the next generation. So, when the next generation are faced with the same threats, they are, as a population, better adapted for survival. This is also known as evolutionary adaptation. It's what has made each species uniquely adapted to their environment, and it's also what will allow species to overcome whatever threats or changes might happen in the future. When only two bumblebees were introduced to New Zealand in the 1800s, they would have represented only a tiny fraction of the original UK population. So the amount of variation they could produce was very low. Not only that, but in small populations like this, any variation they do have can be quickly lost. 
This is because, simply by chance, certain individuals might not produce any offspring, causing their unique versions of genes to be forever lost from the population. This is something known as random genetic drift. Over in New Zealand, the bumblebees have few natural predators or parasites, and the population there is relatively stable. But if they were brought back to the UK, their lack of genetic variation would make it very difficult to readapt and survive in their new home. Getting the bees to breed in captivity was also proving to be a challenge, so conservationists changed their tactic, deciding to get their bees from Sweden instead. Not only did the Swedish bees have more genetic variation, but they also turned out to have DNA that was more similar to the extinct UK population. In 2012, 51 Swedish short-haired bumblebees were welcomed home in southeast England. With more release each year and careful management of their habitat, the bumblebees can now steadily make a comeback. Not only that, but protection of their habitat means other species of UK bumblebee are now also on the rise. Although it's hard to tell how well the new population will cope in the future, these bees serve as a good reminder. Saving species from extinction is about more than boosting numbers. It's about keeping as much natural variation as possible. It's this idea that's behind most captive breeding programmes in zoos and wildlife reserves. And that's because having variation increases a captive population's chances of survival if they were to be reintroduced into the wild. So remember... Evolution is not just a thing of the past. Species need variation to continue evolving and survive into the future.